Anthony Joshua versus Matt Skelton. Now, at this point, I would usually turn around and tell you what my views are about who I think will win the fight and why. But in this situation, it's a little different because I haven't really spoken much, if any, about Anthony Joshua, the boxer. And um, let's get something straight here. Um, it would be great to have another world champion that's British, um, a heavyweight world champion as that. But I think if you want to become heavyweight champion of the world or champion of the world full stop, there are things you need to put in place. Now, there are comparisons being pulled already between Audley Harrison and Anthony Joshua. I don't want to go there at the moment, but I can understand why people feel that way. Um, Joshua's looked good, knocking the people out that he's done, and you know, if he didn't knock the people out that he was knocking out, you would have to question the credibility of, you know, us talking about him being a future world champion and Joshua was going to knock this person out, Joshua was going to knock that person out. You know, people get a bit excited, get a bit on the bandwagon, as they say. Um, but I'm very apprehensive about Anthony Joshua. Yes, he's big, he's strong, he's imposing, but then so are the Klitschko's. Um, he punches hard, but then so do the Klitschko's. Um, but my concerns are, okay, he punches hard, he's knocking people out, like Deontay Wilder does, but there are some concerns defensively is Anthony Joshua improving what is Anthony Joshua like when he gets hit back those are my concerns and worryingly for me no disrespect to Anthony Joshua and his trainer I'm not sure his trainer um, is good enough to take him on to becoming a world champion and we're talking about a guy who's an Olympic gold medalist now it still bemuses me as to why Joshua's decided to have a British trainer um, to become heavyweight champion of the world, I truly believe. Or a, a top trainer. You need to be with somebody who's proven at world level. And I think that it would have been great to have seen Joshua moving with somebody like Tommy Brooks or James Eddie Bashir or, you know, one of the top American trainers. Uh, you know, uh, Don Turner. Just a top American trainer. You know, um... And one who's got a track record of producing good heavyweights. Uh, if you want to be the best in the world, it's not really about the nationality as such, the trainer, but the experience and the quality sparring you're going to get to make you learn the fundamentals. Let's give you an example. You have David Price, who um, was doing well to a certain level. Then he needs to have extra help in. He needed an extra trainer in. Now he's training with Tommy Brooks, and if you look at the development of Tavy Price now, you'll see he's become a lot more, more cuter in defence. And a lot of people are still knocking Davy Price, but he's now learning the professional game. My fear with Anthony Joshua is that I don't think that he's been managed right. In fact, I think the way he's been managed is very much like Frank Brunner. Now, Anthony Joshua is a very intelligent lad, very intelligent guy. And if he looks around him and he looks at where he's at at the moment and looks at the people that are in that camp around him, um, he'll see a lot of fighters that have been uh, mismanaged in terms of the way their careers are being managed. And I'm a slightly concerned for Joshua that he's going to be in this position where he's been built up fighting all these guys that he should knock over and then come against a, become a cropper against a guy that can actually fight back. Um, his fight against Matt Skelton, you know, they give um, Joshua credit for fighting Matt Skelton because, you know, I think uh, Price didn't fight him until about his 14th or 15th fight, I believe. Um, let's get something straight here. Skelton's a, world, a former world, world title challenger, um, former British champion, former European champion. Um, so he's done it and he fought at the highest level uh, of Matt Skelton. Um, at 47, if that's his age, um, he looks in tremendous shape coming into the fight. And this is heavyweight boxing. I'm not convinced about Joshua's defense. I'm not convinced on his ability to um, ability to withstand punches. And I'm not convinced whether it's okay throwing punches out. What do you like when people start throwing punches back at you? And the only way we're going to find that out is in a fight now on the flip side 
We know Scotland can take a shot. We know Scotland can punch, and he has. Let's remind you, Matt Scotland has upset a few fighters beforehand. He upset Danny Williams. Um, he's upset um, Pele. Is Pele really upset? I'm not sure. He upset Danny Williams for sure. Um, so, you know, he knows what it's like to get out there and um, cause the upset. So, Matt Skelton, um, I don't believe he's going to come and lay down. What I want to see is, is if Matt Skelton gets past the jab of Joshua and is able to time Joshua right and land the right hand over the top on his chin, what happens? What happens when Joshua's hit on the chin? I'm not so sure. And I'm not sure um, the way Joshua's fighting at the moment and the way he's been handled, whether he can become world heavyweight champion. And I truly believe, um, we'll, unfortunately, unless drastic changes are made, I believe Joshua will, will be one of these fighters that will find out after the event that he should have got a different training team around him. Again, no disrespect to... The camp and the people that he's training him at the moment, but you just got to ask yourself the question. Well, all right, so who in the heavyweight world have you trained, and how many world champions have you trained? And me going with you and signing and training with you, is that going to get me to a world title? If it's going to get me to a world title, am I going to successfully win a world title and secure a legacy of being one of the best heavyweights Britain's produced? As an Olympic champion, I would be asking that question. Um, same for uh, J um, James DeGale. The same argument I've got for James DeGale. A uh, bit uh, Jim McDonnell was at for every level, and he was his fitness was fantastic. And for fitness, you can't knock um, uh, Jim McDonnell and getting his guy in great shape. And I guess so far, James DeGale and Jim McDonnell have got a good partnership going. I have been critical of that, but. Again, you respect the train and what they're doing. And who's to say that Jim McDonnell won't produce his first world champion in James DeGale? But this situation here in the heavyweight division, it's literally one punch can change your career. And I think that if you're going to try and become the heavyweight champion of the world, there are certain uh, issues. And I think if I were Olympic champion, I'd be asking the trainers around, well, OK, I'm the Olympic champion. You know, let me see your pedigree as a coach. And then side and then pick the best coach and go with that coach because money's not going to be a problem for the Olympic champion. Let's be honest, money's not going to be an issue about picking a trainer. You know, you're going to be high profiled. You're going to be getting the, the fights. So it's about getting the right trainer and right team around you. I'm not sure the team may be good if you're trying to win a British or European title, but on for world honors and to become a great, I'm not so sure if that team is good enough for Anthony Joshua. Maybe I'm being real critical here, but I'm just being honest. I'm not being one of these guys that are going to say it afterwards. I said the same thing about Frank Buglioni. I said about his defence, a, a close to non-existent defence. And I said eventually that would be exposed. That has now happened. Um, and I'm going down this route again. Um, but let's just see. Let's just see. People like to jump on bandwagons. I'm not jumping on anti Joshua bandwagon. These are the reasons why. Not just because of... Him the fighter. I've got nothing wrong with Joshua. I've got nothing against Joshua. But I would be more comfortable with him with a, a trainer of more note, no, uh, note and has proven more as a trainer. You know, um, those are just my thoughts. I wish Joshua all the best in his fight tonight against Matt Skelton. But again, I have my reservations. Um, I don't know how much uh, Matt Skelton's got left. But if the Matt Skelton that fought David Price is anything to talk about and Joshua is a lack of defence, then we could be in for an exciting fight. I don't know. I, it's hard to make predictions of a fight like this. You would expect Joshua, if he's going anywhere, to dispatch of Skelton within four or five rounds. But we don't know what sort of... I know Skelton's in good shape physically, but we don't know if he's turned up for a payday. We don't know what Skelton's mindset is at. You know, you've got to go with a younger, stronger, fitter fighter, which you would think would be Anthony Joshua, but who knows? Who knows? Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm out.